Wow, this interview is unbelievable. Explosive between Eddie Howe and Simon Jordan. For you that haven't got an hour and 20 minutes spare to listen to it, I'm going to digest and digress the best parts of it right now and the important stuff that Howe has went through. Some hard hitting questions from Simon Jordan on this podcast. So let's run through the topics, let's run through what Howe said, and I'll drop my opinions throughout and at the end as well. And as always, I want to hear yours in the comments below. Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. This is going to be a good one. There's loads to get through. And see what you want about Simon Jordan, right? And I've said stuff about him in the past. We all know what he can be like. But fair play to him in this one. And very much so, even more fair play to Eddie Howe for how he dealt with it. Because on Simon Jordan, right, we know what he's like. But at least he asks some hard-hitting questions. At least he isn't afraid to ask the tough stuff. Because a lot of journalists are now. A lot of journalists bottle it, ask the mundane, boring, easy questions, stroke the manager's ego, don't want to upset them. Whereas Simon Jordan couldn't give a crap. Says it how it is, says it to the face, and this is mental, some of the stuff in this interview, in this podcast. I've got it down here, so I'm going to pick out the best bits and the notes I've made on it. But what he's saying is, is unreal. He's literally insulting Eddie Howe to his face. But they both have a bit of a laugh about it. It's a bit strange because it's more so what... Jordan said about him on TalkSport and and other platforms in the past that Eddie may or may not have heard, and he's telling him again to his face. He's kind of taking the piss out of him right to his face. And Eddie Howe is just, you know, brilliant is what Eddie Howe is. He's laughing it off, he's calm, he's articulate, and he's dealing with it so well throughout the interview. He's very integral, he's very good. Honestly, Eddie Howe, he's just, what a bloke, man. Very intelligent, and he doesn't quite get the baits that he wants, Simon Jordan. He's got his fishing rod out, he's fishing there, but the lake is dry, it is iced over, because Eddie Howe didn't react all the way. I have to say in some bits, especially the bit about Paul Mitchell, was very, very good the way he reacted there. We'll get into all that, but as the podcast went on, I made notes on it, so let me know. And let me know as if you have listened to it. But like I say, a lot of you won't have a spare bloody nearly hour and a half to listen to it just yet. It only came out last night, so like I say, I'm going to... Go through it all right now. Eddie Howe did also say in his press conference this morning, which we might touch on at the end of this video, if we've got time, because we'll play Brentford tomorrow, obviously. And he said in the press this morning, you know, it was a very tough interview with Simon Jordan. It was the hardest one he's ever done, and he was very tired after it. And I'm not surprised, because he literally said that he bottled the Celtic job. Simon Jordan said Eddie Howe, because he said it at the time, so he's, he's man enough to, to admit it now, whether Howe seen the clip or not. He said, oh my, well, I thought he bottled the Celtic job. You know, he left Bournemouth and a year gone by and he said, I thought you bottled it. Yeah, I thought it was too big of a club for you and you turned it down, you couldn't handle the pressure. Whereas Eddie Howe actually revealed that he didn't take a Celtic job because he couldn't take his own team with him. He wanted, you know, Tyndall, the rest of them, Simon Weatherstone, all the coaches. He wanted them at Celtic and Celtic had their own ideas for backroom staff and Eddie Howe said, you know, my first job back, he needed his coaching staff around him, you know, the, the system and place that he wants. So he wasn't allowed to have that, so he didn't take it. So he didn't bottle it. And then the same thing applied to Newcastle. Simon Jordan asked, well, would you have took the Newcastle job if you couldn't have had Tyndall and everyone else with you? And he said, no. He said, you know, they're an integral part of how I work. So fair play, Eddie Howe, for that. Bring his mates along for the raid. Love it. Obviously, just joking. You know, his mates are doing a smashing job as well. They obviously are very, you know, important how he works and, and what he does on a day-to-day basis. And then, like he said, yeah, this was another insult. Straight at his face in a tiny little hotel room. I thought you're just a gatekeeper. For Newcastle, you're just a gatekeeper, you're not going to be here for long. The Saudis are going to kick you out and replace you with someone else. Which, again, fair enough to have the balls to say that to his face and get the response that you want. To, to hear him say that, it was refreshing, you know what I mean? To question him on that, what does he think? Because there's plenty of people out there that also believe that that you know he's going to be our Mark Hughes, like he was at Man City. You know, you get someone in, steady the ship, get you up a little bit, and then you bring in another manager that's deemed to be more elite than Eddie Howe, the next level, if you like. And we've seen that even in the past couple of weeks after a couple of bad results against West Ham and Palace and earlier on the season, we've had the questions about Howe. You know, we've, we've done videos on that, we've talked about that. So for him to ask him straight to his face, I thought you were a gatekeeper. Howe laughed it off, you know, and he, and he said, no, I'm, I, I believe that I'm the man. He had to win a trophy. The goal is to win a trophy, something the club haven't done for so long. We've got big ambitions and I don't want to just be a gatekeeper. I think I'm going to be here a long time. So... Fair play to him for that. Again, another insult straight at his face. But like I said, fair play to Simon for asking 
the tough questions, respecting them both. I thought this was a fantastic interview. I do recommend checking the full one out if you've got time. But you're going to hear the best of it here on the channel anyway. So let's rattle through a couple of the topics quickly before we focus on the Mitchell stuff and, and more things in depth. We don't want this video to be a podcast on itself. So Eddie Howe was asked about the Saudis. You know, should it be state-owned clubs allowed in the Premier League? And he wouldn't answer that one. This was the only one where he wouldn't really touch on it, as he hasn't throughout his whole time as Newcastle manager. He was asked about this in his first conference that when, he was, when he was initially appointed as the manager over three years ago. He's still getting those questions asked now. But he wasn't really saying, you know, about you working for the Saudis in the sense of do you think it's right that you're doing it? More so like... Do you think it should be allowed that anyone should be doing it? Should any Premier League club be state-owned? Because same was like, I don't think we'd be allowed to own Saudi things over there. So, yeah, he wouldn't really give an answer in that. He said it's, it was a football decision to come to Newcastle. He's not going to control the ownership or who owns it, and that was the right thing to say. He did talk about Amanda Staveley quite a bit, you know, saying how great of a job she did, how fantastic she was. He obviously didn't like it when she came out after the Cup final, the Carabao that we got beat off Manchester United, and said that, you know, we're going to win the lot. We're going to win the Champions League, Premier League, FA Cups. He said, poof, that added the pressure onto us. But he also liked that about Amanda. He liked their ambition. And the owners are very ambitious. And, you know, you can't change that, really. You shouldn't shy away from that. But obviously the rules have now deterred those ambitions for a while, haven't they, really? You know, not being able to spend the money. And he, and he said, you know, Amanda was fantastic for the club. She really got it and she really cared. So, again, that brought something back to me where I was like, it is a shame that she's gone in and it hasn't quite been the same since to be fair and then the same with Dan Ashrath he actually you know big Dan Ashrath up was saying Ashrath was great to work with very intelligent man my native are very lucky to have him and we didn't want to lose him but he understands why he left so I think that we don't need to go into any more on that this is what we want to talk about the stuff, the stuff of Pierce or Mitchell and other stuff about transfers and that since the window is fast approaching in January PSR Eddie Howe said he was really uncomfortable with selling Minta and Elliot Anderson. He said it was against our will for financial reasons. And he says, why are we doing it? It doesn't feel right. It doesn't make sense. He says the rules initially brought in seem to be correct, seem to make sense, but now they don't. And even Simon Jordan agreed with him. And I was surprised that in the sense that Jordan's like, PSR is ridiculous, doesn't make any sense, needs scrapped. It's only there to protect the big six. That's what Simon Jordan said. So fair play to him from that again. It's good to hear him say that, not just back it, you know, like a lot of mainstream media are on, just want to do keep the big clubs in there, keep the Man City's, Mineators at the top, uh, and, and, you know, really block out anybody else constantly breaking into that top six. So, Eddie Howe said, you know, he's really uncomfortable with it, he wants change, and he doesn't feel like it's right that they grew Elliot Anderson into the player he is today, through the academy for many years, a local Geordie talent, and having to flog him because of a PSR deadline, and you know, losing out on Minter, who they tracked and scouted and sent him on loan, did all that work, then you have to sell them again. So, I mean, PSR is a mess, isn't it? This, for me, was my favourite bit. Simon Jordan. I'm, I'm going to actually put the clip in now so you can see Eddie Howe's response and just put this little clip in for you. Do you work for Paul Mitchell? Sorry? Do you work for Paul Mitchell? I work with Paul Mitchell, yes. How do you view that structure? I mean, there was controversy during the summer. There you have it. I mean, what a reaction that is. Simon Jordan, very good at what he does. Know what he's doing there. Eddie Howe, sorry. <laughs> I work with Mitchell, not for Mitchell. So there you have it. You know, Mitchell's not in charge, was the response there from Eddie Howe. He's not in charge. We'll work together. They are a team. And he wanted to focus on what's happening going forward. You know what I mean? Because Simon Jordan also said this. Well, actually, before I get into what Simon said about uh, Eddie Howe tap dancing around the question, which, again, that's what I like. You know, he's... He's not making it... You don't want it to be easy because then you'll get easy diplomatic answers, which Eddie Howe and all managers will do. But at least he's, he's pushing them a bit. So it was good. You know, it was a it was a raw, honest interview, which was, you know, different to what you see in, in many press conferences. Like, today's press conference was boring as hell. But, you know, some of them are good, some of them not so good. Anyways, you know, Eddie Howe said, the media in the summer blew everything out of proportion regarding the Mitchell relationship. Uh, and he stuck up for... The transfer strategy in the players were bought because when Mitchell said, you know, wasn't fit for purpose and things that haven't been done correctly in recent times and everything else, Eddie Howe stuck up for himself and says, well, I love the players I bought and they've done well, which, to be fair, the majority they have. And Jordan also pointed out, you know, Chris Wood for Nottingham Forest, the players have signed and then sold, they've done well. This is it where Simon Jordan said, you'll try tap dance your way around this and be political, but Mitchell did criticise you. And, he's, and Howe said, you know, well, you put the question that way. 
And Simon said, that's what he said, mate. <laughs> so again, I just like the back and forth. I was just so so brutal in a way. And uh, something we're not normally used to seeing, especially with current managers. You may see it now on podcasts with ex-footballers. But not like this in this circumstance right now. Um, and how say, well, you've twisted it. You've twisted it. I'm sure Paul didn't mean it that way. It's all about what we do in the future. So again, how saying there, you know, Simon, I know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? He knows what he's trying to antagonise him. He's asking those questions. You've twisted it that way. I'm sure Paul didn't mean that. And me and Paul are going to work together in the future to do what's best for this club. That type of question there. So, yeah, a nice, a nice little bit there where you know it's a bit of a back and forth, and you you're getting something out of them, which again it makes a difference to a lot of other conversations you see with journalists and current managers. Also, what I think wound fans up in the summer was when Mitchell was stating, you know, well, we only had one target and it fell through, as if he like, don't blame me. I haven't been here for months. I didn't have the targets. You know, the only one gear, he couldn't get him. Palace wanted too much. Same with Jordan asked Eddie Howe about this. He said, so what, was Mark Gahey your only target then? Was that you only had one target? And Howe said, no, we had several targets. You know, we tried to sign two or three players, but we couldn't get them. And then in the end, the last week or so, yeah, that was the only target we had, Mark Gahey, and we couldn't get the deal done. So again, interesting there, the dynamic and what was right, what was wrong, who was telling the truth. You know, is, is Mitchell saying we only had one? Was he just referring to the last few days of the window? I was saying we did try and sign two or three, you know, big players in the summer. Couldn't get it done. Or at least have two or three targets. Should we maybe say and at least get one of them over the line, whether that be Gahey, whether that be Mike Alisi at the start of the window. You know, other players were linked with Anthony Langer on deadline day. So, aye, that was interesting to hear about that. So he wasn't the only target. We didn't sign any players that we really wanted to do to strengthen that start eleven. That better bloody change in January. That needs to change in January. Same in Jordan then asked, who should have the final say on recruitment? How said it has to be a joint decision. It has to be between the, the manager, whatever the structure is, your sporting director, your owner. Everyone has to be involved. But he believes a manager should not sign a player he doesn't want. He's hands-on and he wants to know who he's signing and who he's coaching. So again, that's where this relationship has to work with Mitchell because a lot of managers get players thrown onto them. A lot of managers now will run with sporting directors and all this data-driven strategies where, right, we think this right winger is going to be good for you. There you go. You work with them. Eddie House saying, you know, he's quite old school in that sense because it is very much that way in a lot of clubs now where sporting directors, Mitchell did it at Southampton Spurs, he literally was giving Pochettino players and then Pochettino would work them. Pochettino didn't, might not have known of saying Marnie or this, that and the other. And Mitchell was like, right, there you go. He's class. We think he is class, can be class. Can you work with him? Whereas Eddie Howe's saying there, he still wants that because he's used to that. You know, he was, he was Mr. Bournemouth doing everything down there. So he wants to do that again at Newcastle. And like I say, you know, so far so good transfer-wise. The majority of the signings have been spot on. Um, so he wants to do that going forward and continue being able to have a say in transfer, which I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. And by the sounds of this, he will get that still. Under Mitchell, we'll find out in January. Uh, what else? We've got a couple other things. What gets how angry? That's what Jordan Nasty said, a lack of effort, timekeeping. But we have a group culture that uh, doesn't really do that. So he's saying there, you know, our players are in order. Basically, we haven't got any we haven't got any troublemakers necessarily. He says things do happen, obviously. You know, obviously, it's not going to be pitch perfect every single day. But he says, you know, his group of players now, they don't really cause them those problems, which is good to hear. Simon Jordan then moved on. Uh, questions about England. A lot of that stuff, to be fair, which we haven't got time to get into, as I'm aware of how long this video has been going on for already. But he was asking, were you one of the 10 managers that was spoke to by the FA about the England job? Eddie Howe said no. Simon Jordan said, well, were you disappointed in that? Eddie Howe again said no. And then he said, well, you know, I know you're going to say that now. And Eddie Howe went to say, I'm happy at Newcastle. He says, I know you're going to say that. But are you disappointed in not be included at all? in the uh, England appointment you know, process. And I find that bizarre. I mean, who the hell were they talking to then? Uh, ten managers and he wasn't one of them. The best British manager on the market, surely. You know, got us to a Champions League place and everything he's done in the past. We had that, like. He said, no, the media hype is so big at England, I want to be out of that. So it sounds like anyhow wouldn't want to be in that circus that revolves around England. He mentioned, you know, Gareth Southgate dealt with the press and the scrutiny very, very well. And he said he doesn't really fancy that. Or at least, you know, the build-up to it and the job itself. Simon Jordan continued to push him and continued to say, you know, is it something you want to do in the future? How try to kind of tap dance around it, as Jordan would say. But then he did ultimately say, you know, yeah, international football down the lane, far down the lane from now, might be something I'm interested in and might be something I think about one day, but definitely not 
now. There was loads more in this. Like I say, check out the interview yourselves on the Upfront channel on YouTube. Fantastic conversation, podcast with Eddie Howe and Simon Jordan. And like I said, Eddie handled everything very articulately with composure and integrity. Uh, it was some fascinating insights. And like I said, well done to Simon Jordan for having uh, the cojones to ask the tough questions as well, as much as you know he does come across as certain uh, things I won't say. <laughs> You know, to describe, he does come across that way online sometimes, and even in this interview, a bit pushy and stuff, but you know what? It, w- it was refreshing, that interview. It was good to see the honesty between them both. So, fantastic stuff. I've went on for quite a while, so the press conference this morning, just quickly, nothing very much exciting to talk about, especially compared to that interview. Uh, team News, Gordon and Tenali were both fatigued and cramped after the Liverpool game the other night, but they should be okay. Sven Botman is doing well. Training 11 v 11s, but he won't be back for another few weeks still. Kieran Trippier is recovering from illness. He might be involved for the trip down to the Bees, but we'll wait and see. He's going to be assessed today. And that trip to the Bees, then. Listen, the thing for me now, Newcastle have to find consistency. If we are going to get European football again, top five, top six even, we have to get some consistency. We can't do what we did on Wednesday night and then go to Brentford and play like we did in our last away game at Crystal Palace. It's just unacceptable. That has to be at least some sort of middle ground. And I think we'll find it. I think we'll do good tomorrow. I am kind of worried about Brentford. I think they're a very good side. You know, even though they sold Ivan Tony, they haven't lacked from that. You know, Vissa and Bumo, who I'm desperate with saying, he's going to score tomorrow. I'm sure of it. And Bumo, right wing. If we get him in the January, we'll solve a lot of our problems. You think back to Liverpool on the other night. Murphy, very good attitude and everything, but hit the post, put on wide, and Boom will probably scores one of them. You know, that's the difference we need out wide. It is, so as much as I like Jacob Murphy, great bloke, and that gives us all that next step up is in Mbumo, who can do it in the Premier League, score goals and assists. He'll probably score a goal or at least assist one tomorrow. We've had some good battles against Brentford, some high scoring games, and Brentford have, are doing decent this season, especially the start of the season, we're scoring goals in the bloody first 10 seconds of every match. So they do pose a threat. But then Villa put three past me of an eight, albeit at Villa Park. I think at home, Brentford a lot better. But they are a good side. Good manager, Thomas Frank. It's going to be a tough game. I'm going to back a narrow 2-1 Newcastle win. Let us know what you think heading into that game down in London tomorrow. I'll be doing a live match reaction after the, the full-time whistle goes, probably 10, 15 minutes afterwards. So join me live on the channel about quarter past five for that reaction. I really hope we're getting a win because, you know, we've had a great draw during the week, a very... Disappointing draw last weekend. I felt like a loss against Palace in the last second. So hopefully three points for the Mags tomorrow will sort us right out. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let us know what you think of Eddie Howe's comments in the Simon Jordan interview. Enjoy your weekend, people. I'll see you on the next one.